Let's give her another hearty amen. 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 We certainly appreciate uh, that music and all of the music presented to us here today. We see that you uh, have a lot of talent in that area from the very young and to those who are still young but just a little older. What do you say? Amen. We appreciate all of it. <clears throat> It's good to be here with you today Amen. on this community guest day, this day uh, that you are honoring your uh, police uh, personnel and also uh, the firemen who give of themselves and at times put their lives on the line that we might be safe. So it's good that they are here, and it's good to be here as a part of this day. I appreciate the invitation extended uh, uh, to me by uh, your Sabbath school department. I thank Sister uh, Francis and uh, Elder Stone for calling me and asking me would I be a part of this day. <clears throat> I consider it a privilege. I just like to say that I was here when Pastor Stone was introduced to his congregation. And uh, <clears throat> uh, he is uh, my pastor. You know, he was at Berean. My wife and I retired and moved down to this area. And uh, when uh, he left, uh, he was greatly missed. We appreciate his service, and we know that you're enjoying his ministry here at New Hope. A very fine pastor and a fine family, indeed. As I look over the congregation, I believe that's brother and sister Brissette out there. It's good to see you. I uh, know them from New York. I think they're long-time members of the Bethel Church there. And I think I saw Sister Osborne back there, one of the um, administrative assistants there in the Northeastern Conference office when I was personal ministries director there. It's good to see, see those folk here today. Let us pray. Our Father in heaven, we thank you for your love. <clears throat> Your mercy and your grace. Thank you for Jesus Christ who gave his life. That we might have life eternal. Amen. Now I pray that you will take your man's servant and hide him behind the cross. That we might not see man but Jesus speaking through man. And give us a rich blessing today, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> I like your theme. Jesus experienced the difference. My sermon title is, Can These Bones Live? And I'm reading from Ezekiel, the 37th chapter, beginning at verse 1. There may be some who were not here when the scripture was read, so I'll read it again. The hand of the Lord was what, everybody? And carried me out in the spirit of the Lord and set me down in the midst of a valley which was full of bones and caused me to pass by them round about. And behold, there were very many in the open valley and lo, they were very dry 
And he said unto me, Son of man, can these bones live? And I answered, O Lord God, thou knowest. Again he said unto me, Prophesy unto these bones. And say unto them, O ye dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. Thus saith the Lord God unto these bones, Behold, I will cause breath to enter into you, and ye shall live. And I will lay sinew, now that's, those are tendons. I will lay sinews upon you, and bring up flesh upon you, and cover you with skin, and put breath in you, and ye shall live, and ye shall know that I am the Lord. So I prophesied as I was commanded. And as I prophesied, there was a noise. And behold, a shaking. And the bones came together bone to his bone. And when I beheld, lo, the sinews and the flesh came upon them. And the skin covered them about, up above. But there was no life, no breath in them. Then said he unto me, Prophesy unto the wind. Prophesy, son of man. Say unto the wind, Thus saith the Lord God, Come from the four winds, O breath, and breathe upon the slain, that they may live. So I prophesied as he commanded me, and the breath came into them, and they lived and stood up upon their feet, an exceeding great army. I've always had a fascination with this vision of Ezekiel. The first part of this chapter deals with, uh, this vision deals with God uh, seeking to revive his people, desiring to revive them, warning dry bones to live. And the second part deals with God wanting to unite his people, dealing with two sticks, the uniting of his people, uh, Judah and uh, Jerusalem. But we will look at the first part today and focus on that. Ezekiel says that he was in the hand of God. He says, the hand of the Lord was upon me and carried me out in the spirit of the Lord. Brothers and sisters, every Christian ought to be in the hand of God. Every Christian ought to be carried by the Spirit of God. What do you say today? Amen. This is the thing that made those prophets of old storm through the land, preaching those soul-stirring messages from on high. This is the thing that gave them Holy Ghost boldness to stand before kings and queens, to stand before Caesars and Tsars. This is a thing that gave them power because they believed that they were led by the hand of God and carried by the Spirit of God. It is reassuring to know today that God wants to lead you and me. But he will only lead us as we give him permission to lead out in our life. Amen. You see, God will never manipulate our mind. He will never forfeit our freedom of choice. We must freely let God come in. Jesus says in Revelation 3 verse 20, Behold, I stand at the door and do what everybody and knock, and if anyone hear my voice, man, woman, boy, girl, and open the door, I will come in. 
Jesus says, you and I must open the door. We must invite him to come in. And once we open the door of our heart and give God permission to lead us, then we become the personal private property of God. We're no longer marching to the drumbeat of the world. We're no longer marching to the drumbeat of self. We're no longer marching to the drumbeat of the crowd. But we are marching to the cadence of Jesus Christ. There's an old familiar hymn that says, He leadeth me, O blessed thought. It's a wonderful thing for us to just sit down sometime and contemplate the leadership of God in our life. Yes, as Christians, we ought to be able to say, he leadeth me. We ought to be able to say, he leadeth me in my personal life. He leadeth me in my family life. He leadeth me on my job. He leadeth me while I'm driving my car. Now, there are a lot of folk who let God lead them, but somehow, once they get behind the wheel, Brother Pastor, uh, they let God go and they have their own way and they begin to drive like speed demons. We know there's nobody like that here today. But as Christians, we ought to be able to say that he leadeth me in the valley. When we we are downcast and when we are in the dumps, as it were, when our spirits are cast down, we ought to be able to say, he leads me. Sorry, but it seemed like uh, my voice wants to give me a little trouble this morning. Pray for me. Everybody ought to have the assurance that he or she is led by God. What do you say today? If we have been born again, if Jesus has done something in our life, if something has happened in our experience, you and I ought to be led by God. God leads Ezekiel into a valley of dry bones. All he sees is a vast sea of bones. All he sees as he looks around him is broken bones everywhere. What he sees are bleached bones, dry bones, broken bones, cracked bones, disinterred bones. He was in a graveyard and he's trying to figure out how he's going to have a revival meeting in a cemetery. Evidently, this valley of dry bones had been a battlefield upon which Judah had put up weak and ineffective resistance against the overwhelming uh, forces of Babylon. And the young soldiers of Judah had been cut down by the icy sword of death. Verse 9 says, these slain, which indicates that these uh, 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 bones came from folk who were cut down in battle. And as Ezekiel walks among these bones, he notices that no skeleton is complete. And his heart uh, is very, very heavy. Brothers and sisters... Sometimes in your experience and in your life, uh, you can feel like you're living in a valley of dry bones. When the family is all uptight, when the family is divided, when children go one way and, and the husband goes another way and wife goes still a different way, you can feel like you're living in a valley of dry bones. When there are problems on the job and 
and those uh, co-workers uh, uh, become mean and nasty and, 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 and supervisors uh, look like they, they are stabbing you in the back. You can feel like you're living in a valley of dry bones. Uh, it can make you feel like, like there's no life in you and, and you don't want to go any further. I was talking to uh, a member one day and he was telling me how he felt like he uh, was living in a valley of dry bones. He said things were so bad on the job that every time he turned his car to head toward work that he became violently ill. So ill that he had to uh, pull to the side of the road at times and regurgitate because he felt like he was living in a valley of dry bones in circumstances that, that he had no control over. He had to work, but the environment almost killed him, he said. When all of your hopes and dreams are, are dashed by the cruel, cold circumstances of life, it can make you feel like you're in a valley of dry bones. When situations begin to come upon you uh, mysteriously and fast and furiously and storms begin to rage in your life, it can make you feel like you're living in a valley of dry bones. You see, bones meant more to the ancient Jews than they mean to us today. Uh, the Jews believed that if your bones were strong, then your soul was strong. That's why the wise man said in Proverbs 17, 22, A merry heart doeth good like a medicine, but a broken spirit drieth up the bones. This is why Proverbs 15.30 says, uh, A good report uh, maketh the bones fat or make the bones uh, healthy. I was sitting in a meeting one day. A meeting of ministers and they had a doctor from one of our hospitals to come and talk to us. And, and uh, he was telling us about an experiment that they had done. There was a stray dog that, that wandered onto the grounds of the hospital and, and every day he would wag his tail and the folk would pet him. He was a, a, a fun loving, a, a little dog filled with joy and, and he greeted the people with glass, gladness and, and the people loved him. But they decided that they would run an experiment and, 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 and see whether or not the, the word of God is true. So they, they determined that they would do a, a, a bone tap on him. And they, they, they tapped into one of his bones and they tested the marrow of his bones. And they discovered that it was red and healthy and, 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 and went along with his, his happy spirit. But then they said... Uh, we're not going to, to uh, when he comes to us, we're not going to be as loving and kind. We're, we're not going to pat him on the head. We're not going to abuse him. But, but, but we're not going to show the kind of love uh, and consideration that we've done in the past. And, and that went on for a while. And then they went back and they, they, they tapped into another one of his bones. Uh, and what they discovered was his marrow was weak and and pale and 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 his 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 health was not as it was before so it lets us know uh, that that bones do mean something and and that that when we are happy and when we are exuberant and when we are filled with the spirit of god and we're living for him it brings on health and it helps us to be merry and it helps us to have good health as well what do you say you see, these bones meant something to Ezekiel. And as he walks among these bones, uh, he notices that they are very, very dry. The jackals had come and feasted on the flesh. The buzzards had come and they had gorged uh, 
on the flesh. The hyenas had come and they had cracked the bones to get at the marrow in them. The rain had come and washed those bones and the sun had come out and baked them and bleached them dry. And Ezekiel's heart was very heavy because, and get this this morning, these bones represented his people. Ezekiel 37, 11, uh, God says to Ezekiel in vision that these bones are the whole house of Israel. In other words, they represented God's people. They represented God's church. They were all dried up. They were down in Babylon, far away from Jerusalem. These bones represent God's people who are dried up with despondency and despair, dried up by being in a strange land, dried up by being in prison, as it were, down in Babylon, and they could not get back to Jerusalem, dried up by having wandered far away from God, and now they are spiritually dry. Dry bones in the valley, disconnected and scattered. Uh, Psalms 137 verses 1 through uh, 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 4 sort of lets us know how they felt. It says, by the rivers of Babylon, there we sat down, yea, we wept when we remember Zion. We hanged our harps upon the willows in the midst thereof, for they are they that carried us away captive, required of us a song, and they that wasted us, required of us mirth, saying, sing us one of the songs of Zion. And God's people turned around and said, how can we sing the Lord's song in a strange land? That they felt like they were dry bones uh, in, in, in a strange land. They felt like they had no hope. All hope was gone. So they refused to sing the Lord's song. Anytime we wander away from God and we refuse to hear his voice, we refuse to obey his word, we are going to find ourselves in spiritual captivity, held prisoner by the devil. What do you say? And the longer we stay away from God, the drier our spiritual bones will become. These bones represent the spiritual condition of God's people then and now. Today, As we read Revelation, it talks about the Laodicean church in Revelation 2 verse 7. And if we're not careful and if we're not connected to Jesus and get that experience that comes through communion with him, we will be dry bones. Uh, Revelation 2.17 says, Thou sayest that I am rich and increased in goods and have need of nothing. But God's word says, not knowing that, that, that you're wretched and miserable and poor and blind and naked. If we wander away from God and refuse to be led by him, we're nothing more than dry bones in the valley. I wonder this morning, If God doesn't picture us sometimes as nothing more than a bunch of dried up bones. Dried up by form and fashion. Dried up by hate and hypocrisy. Dried up by meanness and materialism. Dried up by nastiness and negativity. Dried up by sin and selfishness. Dried up by wickedness and worldliness. Dried up by greed and gluttony. I wonder if God doesn't figure us to be nothing but a bunch of dried up bones at times. So here Ezekiel is. He's in a valley of dry bones. And as he walks among these bones, God poses a very interesting question to him. God says to Ezekiel, son of man, can these bones live? And you know, I like the fact that God called Ezekiel's son. That even though he was walking around in the valley of dry bones. This lets me know today 
that no matter what condition we find ourselves in, we may feel like that we are in a valley of dry bones, but God still calls us his sons and his daughters. He still owns us. He still desires to help us. So no matter how we feel today, uh, he sees that we are his sons and daughters today. He says, son of man, can these bones live? Evidently, this was a question in the forefront of the mind of Ezekiel. Can these dry bones live? Lord, uh, can they live uh, if they cannot sit next to certain people in the church? Lord, can they live if they have a lack of love and affection? They can have all kinds of love and affection for somebody else's husband and somebody else's wife, but they have no love and affection for their own husband or wife. Uh, they are all lovey-dovey and kissy-kissy and huggy-huggy with somebody else's children outside of the home, but mean as rattlesnakes in their own home. Lord, uh, can these dry bones live? Lord, can these bones live uh, when they simply just swing in the church uh, every Sabbath day routinely and by habit and swing out again untouched and unchanged and unmoved by the music, the prayers, and the preaching of God's word? Can these bones live? And I like the answer that Ezekiel gives. Ezekiel answers like a man who believes God when he says that when a man is dead, he's really dead. And that humanly speaking, it is impossible for these bones to live. But Ezekiel realizes that he's not just talking with a man, that he is talking with God Almighty and Omnipotent. Yes. Uh, the prophet Jeremiah says in Jeremiah thirty two seventeen, O oh Lord God, there is nothing too hard for thee. And Jesus himself says in Matthew nineteen twenty six, with God all things are possible. So Ezekiel says, O oh Lord God, thou knowest. In other words, he is saying this question is beyond uh, my finite uh, human understanding. All I can say is, Lord, uh, thou knowest. Yes. You know, sometimes uh, in our walk with God, uh, we can know too much for our own good. Rather than saying, Lord, uh, you know what's best for me. Lord, what will you have me to do? We take things in our own hands. Uh, we go ahead and make a mess of our lives and sometimes make a wreck of our lives rather than letting God lead the way. What do you say? Amen. Bible says in Proverbs 3, trust in the Lord with all thine heart. And lean not unto thine own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him. And he shall direct thy past. Oh what peace we often forfeit says the old song. Oh what needless pain we bear. All because we do not carry everything to God in prayer. So what Ezekiel is saying this morning is Lord... All I know is that you created the earth out of nothing and yet you made it something. Lord, all I know is that you took a lump of clay and formed it in the hand of divinity and breathed into it its nostrils, your breath of life, and it became a living soul. And Lord, if you can take the dust of the ground and make a man, and if you can take nothing and then make something, then I know that you know whether or not these dry bones can live. Oh Lord God, thou knowest. And I'm glad that Ezekiel was a young man. They believed that he was in his late teens or early 20s and he didn't have any better sense to believe God uh, when God sent him out there to preach to those dry bones that they might live. 
You see, if God had come to the scientists, they might have said, look, uh, we need empirical research. We cannot uh, accept anything that defies logic. I'm glad he didn't come to us. We might have said, look, Lord, uh, I don't want to look like a fool out there in the cemetery preaching to a bunch of dried up bones. Yes, the command of God uh, uh, to us might seem strange at times, but we better go ahead and do what God says anyhow. What do you say? Amen. Those recently baptized uh, may have found it strange uh, going to church on Saturday, but you went ahead and did it anyhow. What do you say? Uh, those uh, recently joined the church might uh, us. Consider it strange uh, not eating certain foods uh, that you used to eat, but you went ahead and you stopped eating it anyhow, and now you feel better. Your blood pressure is down, and you walk with more vigor because God told you to stop eating it. So whatever God tells us to do, let us not argue with God. Let's go ahead and do it anyhow. What do you say? So God says to Ezekiel, son, go on out there and preach to those dry bones. And in my mind, I can see and hear Ezekiel talking with God. Lord, what shall I preach? Shall I preach some difficult sermon where everybody has to run and get a dictionary and a commentary so that they can understand what I'm saying? Lord, shall I preach something uh, that I learned down at the university? Lord, shall I preach something about from the words of Plato and Aristotle? <clears throat> Lord, uh, what shall I preach? And I can hear uh, in my mind God answering Ezekiel. Well, Ezekiel, you go on out there and you preach the word of the living God. Ezekiel 37, 4, uh, God says to Ezekiel, say to them, O ye dry bones, uh, hear the word of the Lord. What we need to hear today is the word of God. What do you say? For that's the only thing that's going to do dry bones any good. Psalm 119, 105 says, Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. John 6, 63, Jesus says, The words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. And Job 23, 12 says, I esteem thy words, the, the words of his mouth more than my necessary food. And just as we need to eat every day to sustain health and strength, we need to feed on God's word and study it every day so that we can be strong. What do you say today? And here Ezekiel is. He's preaching his heart out in a cemetery. Maybe somebody went by and said, look at that young man. Maybe he's practicing a sermon. Maybe somebody said, no, he's lost his mind. You know, that's what people say about us when we stop living uh, the way of the world and we start following Jesus. Some folks say you don't have to be that good. He didn't mean that you had to do all of that and give up all of those things that you were used to. You done lost your mind, they will say to us. But Philippians 2, 5 says, Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. Yes, we've lost our mind. We've got the mind of Jesus. We're no longer following the devil. We're following the word of God. What do you say? Everywhere I go, I know there'll be somebody who don't want to hear the word of God. Everywhere I go, I know there'll be somebody who may just get mad. Everywhere I go, I know there'll be somebody who might say he preaches too loud and too long. 
but I must go ahead and preach the word of God anyhow because God told me to and because the word of God is the only thing that will do my dry bones any good. I've been told to cry out and to spare not and to lift up my voice like a trumpet and that we must do as far as the word of God is concerned. I don't know how long Ezekiel preached. Maybe he preached for 20 minutes and nothing happened. Maybe he preached for half an hour and still nothing happened. Maybe he preached for 45 minutes and still nothing happened. But way after a while as he began to wind up his sermon and go into his, his appeal... I believe that a foot bone began to hop around out there somewhere. Those bones began to shake and those bones began to rattle and those bones began to roll as as bones started to come together. And in verse 7 of Ezekiel 37, the Bible says that there was a noise and a shaking in the valley as those bones uh, started To come together. The old song says. That the toe bone. Was connected to the foot bone. And the foot bone. Connected to the ankle bone. And the ankle bone. To the leg bone. And the leg bone. To the knee bone. And the knee bone. To the thigh bone. And the thigh bone. To the hip bone. And the hip bone. To the back bone. And the back bone. To the shoulder bone, the shoulder bone, to the neck bone, to the neck bone, to the head bone. And all of these bones came together by the power of the word of God. It lets you know that there's still power in God's word today. And even though we may we may seem dry, even though we may seem that we have no life in us, if we turn to Jesus, if we turn to God... God can give us life through his word. What do you say today? Then Ezekiel looked and behold sinew, those attendants and flesh and skin came upon these bones. But the Bible says, but they still didn't have any life into them. God said, wait a minute Ezekiel. Don't wind up your sermon yet. Keep on preaching. Keep on prophesying. Appeal to the north wind, the south wind, the east wind, the west wind to come on and blow upon those bones. You see, wind and breath represents the Holy Spirit. And we cannot have life until the Holy Spirit comes. We cannot have revival until the Holy Spirit comes. We cannot have transformation until the Holy Spirit comes. We cannot have reformation until the Holy Spirit comes. So Ezekiel says, wind, come on and blow upon these bones and do your job. And when the wind, when the breath of God's Holy Spirit came, the Bible says these complete bodies stood up on their feet, a mighty army. What do you say today? When the Holy Ghost comes in, we'll have more members at prayer meeting than we have in a social meeting. When the Holy Ghost comes in, wrongs will be made right. I remember when I was a boy, I loved uh, when communion time came around again in my little old church. I, 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 I didn't know what was going on at first, but as I got older, I understood it. I could see two or three people gathering in little groups all around the church. And what I came to know is that uh, they were asking people to forgive them of their uh, wrongdoing and of their trespasses. If they had run into uh, oh, uh, uh, one of the brothers or sisters uh, since the last communion, they, they, they wanted to make things right with God and with one another. And it lets us know that when the Holy Spirit comes in, uh, we're not going to have any differences with each other. What do you say today? 
when the Holy Spirit comes in, there will not be any big eyes or little you. Why? Because the ground is level at the cross of Jesus Christ. When the Holy Spirit comes in, there will be no tension between black and white and black and black. No matter where we were born or where we came from. Amen, somebody. When the Holy Spirit comes in, we will love each other like we ought to love each other. When the Holy Spirit comes in, we will realize that we should bear the fruit of the Holy Spirit in our life. Galatians 5, 22 and 23 uh, list the fruit of the Spirit. And the Bible says when we have the Holy Spirit, there will be love and joy and peace and patience and kindness and goodness and faithfulness and gentleness and self-control. Oh, how we long for the power of the Holy Spirit in our lives today. When the Holy Spirit comes in, those living, active bodies are going to stand up on, on their feet an exceeding mighty army, no longer stricken with the sickness of jealousy. No longer stricken with the sickness of envy and gossip and lying. No longer stricken with the sickness of backbiting and evil conniving and peace breaking and worldliness and adultery and fornication. They are no longer dry bones in the valley, but they are now children of God. They are now soldiers of the cross. I pray that God's Holy Spirit will fall here this morning in a powerful way because all of us need Jesus. Because Jesus can make a difference in our life. Uh, There's an old song that says, Holy Spirit, light divine, shine upon this heart of mine and chase the shades of night away and turn my darkness into day. Ezekiel 37, 14, God says, I will put my spirit in you. Then he says, when I do that, you shall live. If we are going around without the Holy Spirit in our lives, we are not really alive. What do you say today? We are just existing. He said, I'll put my spirit in you. Then you will really live. And then he says, I will place you in your own land. I like that. I don't know about you, but I'm tired of the problem of this old world and I long for the land that Jesus has prepared for us. He says in John 14, 1 through 3, that he's going to prepare a place for us. And if it were not so, he wouldn't have told us. I want to go to heaven, brothers and sisters, because of what will be there. Jesus will be there. The holy angels will be there. The disciples and prophets of old will be there. Redeemed family members and relatives and friends will be there. But I can tell you today, I also want to go to the land that Jesus has prepared for us because of what will not be there. There will not be any more sin or sinners there. No more sickness there. That means no more cancer, heart disease, diabetes, arthritis, leukemia, Alzheimer's, AIDS, strokes, lupus. No more sickness at all there. Amen, somebody. No more pain. No more sorrow. No more death. No more crying. Nothing to be sad about. No more marriage and family and relationship problems. No more crime, robbers and murderers officers. No more troublesome neighbors. No more backstabbing co-workers and bosses. No more financial problems and foreclosures. No more war. No more hunger. No more starvation. No more earthquakes. No more floods and No more tornadoes, and thank God, no more hurricanes. What do you say? Dry bones can live again. Yes, dry bones can live again when we are filled and with and transformed by the power of the Holy Spirit. Let us turn our lives over anew or for the first time today to Jesus Christ. 
that he might make a tremendous difference in our lives. What do you say today? I'm going to ask our musicians to play for us very softly and prayerfully. All to Jesus I surrender as we wrap up our message for today. My appeal today is going to be a short one. How many of us today want the Holy Spirit to guide us and we want to be in the hand of God? Let me see your hands today. God bless you. How many of you today along with me want to enter that land that God has prepared for the faithful? Let me see your hands today. God bless you. And I'm going to make a very special appeal now. I don't know who you are, but if there's somebody here today and you have not surrendered your life to the Lord Jesus Christ as your personal Savior, and today you feel His Spirit speaking to you, telling you that you can live as you've never lived before. No matter what problems you had in the past, no matter what habits you've been struggling with, He says, if you come to me, I can give you victory. Maybe you've been thinking in the past that I'll wait until I get myself right. But what he's saying to you and to me today, you cannot get yourself right. You come to me and yield to me and I will get you right. You're here today. And you want to say, Jesus, I want to give my life to you. I want to unite with God's commandment keeping people. If you're here today and that's your prayer, just raise your hand where you are today. Say yes to Jesus. I see that little hand. God bless you. The Bible says, and a little child shall lead them. There are some hands over here as well. Are there others who want to say, all the way my Savior leads me? God bless you. Our Father in heaven, we thank you for those who have raised their hands today, saying that they want to walk with you all the way. I pray that you will put a seal upon their commitment and that you'll give them joy and peace within. Help them to know that this is the greatest decision that they could ever make. Help them to know that there's no problem too hard for you. That you can even revive dry bones. That you can give them life and joy and happiness. I pray, oh God, that all of us, that we may recommit ourselves to you today that you may guide us always in newness of life. Bless us at this end. In Jesus' name we pray. Let all the people say, Amen.